Hi, welcome to Finance Business and Investing. Warren Buffett says that the three most important words in investing are margin of safety, and there's no doubt that value investors in the past and present have used this idea a lot. We're talking people like Charlie Munger. Warren Buffett, Benjamin Graham, Rice, Spear, Peter Lynch, and even Seth Klarman, whose book is called Margin of Safety, are all famous investors. So, if we want to become value investors, it's probably a good idea to learn about margin of safety and make sure we use it in our investing strategies. But I find that most investors have a problem. Most people who want to invest have never learned how to figure out what a business is worth on its own, so they don't know how to use margin of safety in their own investments. I want to change that. By the end of this video, I hope you'll have all the skills you need to figure out the intrinsic value of any company you look at and figure out what a fair margin of safety price is for that business. So let's get started. Okay, so before we can talk about the margin of safety, which is a key part of Warren Buffett's way of investing and a key part of his continued success as an investor, we need to know how to figure out what a business is really worth. The business's fair value is its intrinsic value. It's how much the business is worth right now. Warren Buffett often uses a quote from the theory of investment value by American economist John Burr to explain this. Williams says that the real value of a stock, bond, or business today is based on the cash inflows and outflows that can be expected to happen over the remaining life of the asset. These cash flows are discounted at an appropriate interest rate. In this case, the business is what is being sold. So, the real value of a business is just the sum of the present values of all the cash flows that business will make in the future. So, if you think you own this business completely, you are the only owner. Okay. You own the whole thing, so you need two pieces of information to figure out what the business is really worth. You need to know how much money that business will bring in over time. You need to know how much those cash flows will be worth to you right now. So, first of all, the owner's earnings are how much money a business makes for its owners. And you can figure out how much the business owner made in a given year by looking at the cash flow statement, taking the operating cash flow, and then taking the maintenance capital expenditure away. The operating cash flow, which is sometimes called cash flow from operating activities, is the amount of cash that this company's business operations brought in during that time. The maintenance capital expenditure is the amount of money that goes out just to keep the business in its current competitive position. The most accurate number to use for these calculations is the owner's income. But it's annoying that companies don't have to report their maintenance capital expenditures, but some do. Some great companies do which is very helpful, but most don't. So, many investors just use total capital expenditure instead of maintenance capital expenditure. On the cash flow statement, this is called the purchase of property, plant, and equipment. And that doesn't just include the costs of keeping the business running, it also includes all the costs of keeping the business growing. And, 
To make the calculations easier, we'll also use free cash flow. Using free cash flow is more conservative, but it makes the calculations easier. But because it's more cautious, it's also a little less accurate. But an advantage of free cash flow, which I just talked about, is that you can figure it out from any cash flow statement, which is something I just mentioned. So it's very easy to find this number in the financial statements. It's just operating cash flow minus the amount spent on property, plant, and equipment. So, after all that, how do we figure out what a business is really worth? Well, for this example, let's say we want to buy the local corner store, which has only been selling snacks and drinks for the past 10 years. This is how the free cash flow for this corner store business has looked every year. And if you happen to notice, well, it just so happens that this business's free cash flow grows by 10% every year. How's that for being the same? Now, what we're going to do is take the most recent free cash flow number and use the growth rate of 10%, which has been very stable. And we're going to keep growing that free cash flow by 10% every year for the next 10 years. Then, we'll assume that we'll be able to sell the business after 10 years for 10 times its free cash flow. So, this is what it looks like when we put all those numbers into a spreadsheet. So, surely, the value of the business to us is just the sum of all of these cash flows. You just add them all up, and that's the value of the business to us. That is the cash flow that we, as owners, will get. Not quite if we want to buy it right now. It's not quite the intrinsic value because the cash flows we'll get in, say, the 7th, 8th, or 9th year of ownership, are not as valuable to us as the cash flows we'll get, say, next year or the year after that. And the reason they're not as valuable to us is that we won't get the cash flows from them for a long time. Those cash flows will happen a very long time from now. And of course, there's a time value of money. If you ask me whether I wanted $10 now or $10 in a year from now, I'm always going to take the $10 now because what I can do is I can take that $10, put it to work and in a year's time I can make that $10 into $11, right? So I'm $1 better off. So I'm always going to take the money sooner. So, if we go with this idea, we need to discount the future cash flows of this business to what they are worth to us right now. And we'll take 15% off of it every year because that's what we want to get out of our investments. So if we go ahead and we discount all of these future cash flows by 15% annually, this is what the table now looks like now. We also discount that one-time cash flow that we're going to get by selling the business in 10 years for 10 times its free cash flow. Then we have the present value of all the cash flows that will come from this investment in the future. So, the real value of the business to us now is just the sum of all of these cash flows. In this case, the corner store is worth about $306,000 on its own. So, if we went to the owners and offered them $306,000 for their business, we'd probably get 15% returns every year for 10 years, assuming the business grew its free cash flow by 10% every year. But if the business owners said, no, 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 we don't, that would be a different story. For the business, we need $500,000. Our return will, of course, be a lot less. 
If the owners of the business just want to get rid of it and say, look, just take it for $200,000, I want it gone, then it's clear that we'll make a much higher return. Overall, though, that business is worth $306,000 if it makes 15% every year. Now, here's the thing, every day, the stock market tells us how much thousands and thousands of businesses are worth, right? By looking at each business's market capitalization, we can figure out how much the whole business is being sold for right now. Now, this is a huge advantage for us because it means we can look at the financial statements of these companies, figure out their intrinsic value, and then compare that to their current market capitalization to see if they are trading at their intrinsic value, above their intrinsic value, or below their intrinsic value. But the thing is that all of the math we've done to try to figure out the intrinsic value. It's only a guess. It's a well-informed guess. Yes, we can make it less likely that our guesses are wrong by looking for businesses with an economic moat or a long history of financial data that is very consistent and easy to predict. But we have to be honest and say that there will always be things that could happen to any business in the future that we can't predict and can't control. What if, for example, there was a fire in the corner store and it had to stay closed for a year while it was fixed? Or, what if a juice bar opened right next door to our business and cut our drink sales in half? Now, these things might not happen very often, but they show that we can't always count on our estimates. Okay, it's like Travis Cloak setting up for a set shot 10 meters in front of him. It's probably going to go through, but you can't be sure. Because we can't be sure of our estimates of future cash flows, we can't be sure of our estimates of intrinsic value either. So, to make up for this, we need a margin of safety so that we don't buy our business at its calculated intrinsic value. If we do that, even if we're just a little bit off, it will have a big effect on our returns. So, what we need to do is give ourselves a buffer, a safety buffer, a margin for error, or a margin of safety. About the margin of safety, Benjamin Graham writes this. The main purpose of the margin of safety is to make it unnecessary. A good guess of what Seth's future will be like. Climate says that there needs to be a margin of safety because valuation is not an exact science. The future is hard to predict, and investors are only human, so they sometimes make mistakes. So, we take our intrinsic value and take a little bit off of it. Just to give ourselves a little room in case we're wrong about what we think. So, if we thought that corner store was worth $306,000, we might only be able to offer the owners $200,000 or $250,000. So we only buy a business if it's being sold for less than what it's really worth. But how much less? Well, it's kind of up to you at this point. For example, experienced investors who are very sure they can predict the cash flows of a business in the future. They might choose, say, a 20% or 30% safety margin. But you might choose a 50% margin of safety if you're a new investor or if you're putting money into a company that's a little bit riskier or less predictable. Now, don't get me wrong. It's hard to find a business with a 50% margin of safety, 
and if you're looking in the current market, it's unlikely that you'll find any. But that's the way we have to think. As investors, we wait patiently until the businesses we've been studying are offered to us by the market at prices that are much lower than their true value. That does give us that margin of safety. If you invest in a business with a 50% margin of safety, you can be very, very wrong about the business's future, and you'll probably still make, say, 15% a year. So if you can find it, that's a gold mine of a chance. So, this is how you can reduce a lot of the risk when you buy a business. By making sure you only buy at a margin of safety share price, you take away a lot of the risk that the stock will go down. Last but not least, I wanted to turn the page and look at this picture. Based on what we've talked about in this video, you should now feel confident that you can read this chart and explain exactly what it means. So, this chart shows, first of all, how much the business is worth. This is the business that the stock market gives us. This changes every single day, of course. There's a new price, and Mark is offering us a new price for those companies' shares. The business's intrinsic value is what we got from our discounted cash flow analysis, where we added up all future cash flows to figure out how much the business is worth to us as the only owner. Then, as this chart shows, the price of the business goes down until it gets close to its true value. But that's not our buy trigger, of course. It's good to see that the price now matches the real worth. But that doesn't mean we have to buy right away, because we're talking about. We need that cushion because we might be wrong about the future and about what intrinsic value is. So, you can see that if the share price or market price of the business keeps going down, this line will be 30% below its true value. Then, when it goes down under that line, that's our sweet spot, our chance to make a lot of money. Then we decide that we want to buy into this business because we've done our research. First, we know a lot about the company. We know it has a great competitive edge, and we've looked into the management team and found that they're doing a good job. Okay. The company's management has very few debts, and then we got that last key part. We can now buy this company for less than what it's really worth. And we have the margin of safety, which protects us from the risk of going down quite a bit. And this is the main reason why all of those famous investors I mentioned earlier have been good investors year after 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 year. They are very smart and wait for opportunities to buy great businesses when their share prices are at that margin of safety level, where there is a lot to gain and not much to lose. So, guys, I hope that helped you in general. I hope that this video taught you something. But other than that, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I'm really grateful. I hope the video was fun for you. I hope it taught you something, and I'll see you next time.